The MMA map prediction model is sitting at 7 and 1, taking its first loss with the Yarn vs Figgy fight a few weeks ago. I think that fight did a good job of highlighting the primary weaknesses of the model, being weight class changes, close split decision losses, and the quality of opponents when considering losses in general. So taking in a lot of your comments into consideration, we are making the final changes in V3 of the model that will take us to the end of this experiment. Now, this doesn't mean you should stop leaving suggestions. I will still note down the best ones, but they'll be implemented in a potential season two of the model where we will do larger, more fundamental changes to the model. In any case, I'm moving the rules of the model to the description box as it's starting to get a bit long, but I'll go over the new rule changes now. So the major rule change is implementing a ranked base points deduction for losses. So from here forward, you will lose two points for losing to the champion, five points for losing against ranked one to five, seven points for losing to rank six to 11th, 10 points for losing against rank 12 to 15th, and 12 points for losing to an unranked opponent. You will still lose another five points on top of this for getting finished. The next change is now you will get two points deducted for fights that occurred outside of the weight class of the fight we are predicting. For example, if a fight is taking place at welterweight, but fighter X fought at lightweight, if they earned 15 points for that lightweight fight, we will deduct that down to 13 points. However, this deduction can't go into negative points. We will now take two points off for split decision victories and add two points for split decision losses. We will also add one point either way for majority decisions. And finally, if a fighter is taking a fight on short notice, they will lose five points, which I'm defining as around four weeks, no hard exact amount to days or weeks, but playing that by ear, case by case. So those were the new rule additions which will be used in V3 of the MMA math prediction model, which you can find in the description box. With that out of the way, however, let's finally take a look at the card we are predicting today with UFC Fight Night Covington vs Buckley. And not to waste any more time, let's just jump straight into it. Starting with the strawweight co-main event with number 6th ranked Mackenzie Dern taking on number 8th ranked Amanda Rebus. And without spoiling the results and looking too deep into it just yet, I can comfortably predict that this will probably be the lowest scoring fight we've looked at in this series, even considering the new rule changes. But let's jump straight into it with Amanda Rebus, who will earn 5 points as she gave Dern her first loss over 5 years ago. 5 fights ago for Amanda takes us to the 14th of May 2022 for UFC Fight Night Blahovitz vs Ratchic, where Amanda, ranked 9th in the strawweight division, will move up to take on number 1 ranked flyweight Caitlin Chukagian. In an unexpected banger, Rebus would earn multiple takedowns and control large chunks of this fight but was unable to do much tangible damage to Chikagian, while also kind of getting pieced up on the feet. Ultimately, the judges would give the split decision to Chikagian, and Amanda will lose 5 points. 4 fights ago takes us to the 4th of March 2023 for UFC 285 Jones vs Garn, where Rebus, who was still deciding to chill at flyweight and is still unranked, will take on number 8th ranked Viviane Arujo. Rebus would face an early scare as Viviane jumps the guillotine and almost gets it locked in. Rebus, however, would wiggle out and dominate the rest of the fight with her signature high energy output, working her way in and out of close submission attempts, on her way to winning every round on two judges scorecards and earning 11 points. Three fights ago takes us to the 24th of June 2023 for UFC Fight Night Emmett vs Toporia where Rebus, again still hanging out at flyweight, will now take on number 9th ranked Macy Barber. In an awesome back and forth, both fighters would have moments of success with some seriously fun exchanges both on the feet and in the grappling. Ultimately, it would be Macy who would drop Rebus and finish her off with ground strikes 3 minutes and 42 seconds into the second. Rebus will lose 14 points for this loss. Two fights ago for Amanda takes us to the 18th of November 2023 for UFC Fight Night Craig vs Allen, where now back at strawweight and ranked 10th in the division, Rebus will take on number 9 ranked Luniana Pinero. Getting off to a horrid start, Luniana would batter Amanda in the first. However, Rebus would come back in the second with her signature hyperactivity and continue this momentum into the third where she would land a picture perfect spinning wheel kick and finish the fight off with strikes, 3 minutes and 53 seconds into the third, earning 12 points. 
Amanda's last fight takes us to the 23rd of March, 2024 for UFC Fight Night Rebus vs Nama Yunez. Where, now back at the flyweight division and ranked 8th in that division, Rebus would be taking on former strawweight champion but unranked flyweight Rose Nama Yunez. In a weird fight where both fighters put on uncharacteristic performances, Thug Rose would win 4 rounds fairly comfortably but not look too impressive as Rebus would lose favourable positions with poor grappling choices. Rebus will lose via unanimous decision and 14 points. Okay, moving on to Mackenzie Dern who kinda crazy to think about is heading into a 15th UFC fight after now being in the organisation for over 6 years. It's kinda weird to think about Mackenzie Dern as being a UFC veteran but here we are. 5 fights to go for Dern takes us to the 20th of May 2023 for UFC Fight Night Dern vs Yarn, where Mackenzie, ranked 5th, would take on 6th ranked strawweight Yarn Jaonan. In a classic striker vs grappler matchup, Dern would get close to fully locking in submission attempts multiple times but ultimately fail in securing any of them, as Yarn would go on to piece her up on the feet. In the end, the judges would side with the damage done by Yarn in a majority decision victory and losing 7 points. 4 fights ago takes us to the 20th of May 2023 for UFC Dern vs Hill, where Dern, now ranked 8th, will be put up against 14th ranked Angela Hill. In one of her best performances, Dern would show off vast improvements in almost every aspect of her game, particularly her cardio and wrestling which historically had been major issues for her. Dern would comfortably win 4 out of 5 rounds on every scorecard, earning 2 points. 3 fights ago for Dern takes us to the 11th of November 2023 for UFC 296 Prohaska vs Pejera, where Dern, now ranked 7th, would take on former champ and number 5th ranked Jessica Andrade. Unfortunately for Dern, she would absolutely get out muscled and bullied the entire fight, including getting dropped late in the first and likely getting saved by the bell. Andrade would continue to bully Dern in the second, finishing her 3 minutes and 15 seconds into the second, losing 10 points for Dern. Two fights ago takes us to the 17th of February 2024 for UFC 298 Volkanovski vs Toporia, where Dern, now ranked 7th, would be put up against number 3 ranked Amanda Lemos. In a very fun fight, Dern would lose the first two rounds in typical Dern fashion getting pieced up on the feet and failing to utilise her wrestling effectively. Dern would make an unexpected rally in the third however, getting in some dominant positions, but ultimately that wouldn't be enough and Dern will lose via unanimous decision, losing 5 points. Dern's last fight takes us to the 3rd of August 2024 for UFC Fight Night Sanhagen vs Namaga Madoff, where Dern, ranked 7th, will take on number 10th ranked Lupi Godinez. In an underrated and close scrap, both fighters would seemingly land at will, but ultimately Dern would get some good control time which likely gave her the razor thin unanimous decision, earning 6 points. So there we have it, MMA math predicts that Amanda Rebus will beat Mackenzie Dern again. It's been a long time since their first fight, but unfortunately for Dern, the issues that caused her to lose their first meeting are still apparent in her game today especially after dropping her boxing coach Jason Perillo and her already subpar striking regressing even more since then. Like most Dern fights at this stage, if Dern can't secure submission, I don't see many avenues to disagree with MMA math here. Moving on to the main event where we have number 6 ranked Colby Covington stepping up on short notice to take on number 9 ranked Joaquin Buckley, who was originally slated to take on Ian Gary. I'm particularly interested in how this prediction turns out, especially considering how inactive Colby has been in the last 5 years and how often he seems to get title shots, compared to Buckley who has consistently been one of the most active fighters in the entire roster, but let's not waste any time and jump straight into it, starting with number 9th ranked Joaquin Buckley who will gain an extra 3 points as he is undefeated in his last 5. 5 fights ago takes us to the 20th of May 2023 for UFC Fight Night Dern vs Hill, where Buckley, coming off 2 straight losses for the first time in his career, will move down to welterweight and be put up against an also unranked Andre Fileu. In an impressive weight class debut from Buckley, the two would trade big strikes in the first and through most of the second. At the end of the second, Buckley would land a beautiful high kick 
finishing Fila Yu 4 minutes and 15 seconds into the second and earning 5.5 points. Four fights ago takes us to the 7th of October 2023 for UFC Fight Night Dawson vs Green, where Buckley, still unranked, will take on an also unranked Alex Morono. In a fairly dominant performance for Buckley, he would land a big body kick in the second which gave him momentum in the third, where Buckley would crack Morono again and have him hurt and close to a finish pretty much the entire round. Buckley would win every round on every judge's scorecards, earning another 5.5 points. Three fights ago takes us to the 30th of March 2024 for the co-main event of UFC Fight Night Blanchfield vs Fior, where a still unranked Buckley would take on his first ranked opponent at welterweight in number 11th ranked Vicente Luque. In a really hard watch for any Luque fan, the Brazilian would look a shell of his former self ever since his brain hemorrhage. Buckley would capitalize on a Luque who clearly didn't want to be there, finishing him via ground and pound 3 minutes and 17 seconds into the second, earning 10 points. Two fights ago takes us to the 11th of May 2024 for the co-main event of UFC Fight Night, Lewis vs Nascimento, where Buckley, now ranked 11th, would be put up against unranked Nasultan Ruzibelev. In yet another good performance from Buckley, he would secure the first two rounds with takedowns after a close battle on defeat. In the third, however, Buckley would pull away, dominating the entire round and almost finishing the fight multiple times on his way to winning every round on two judges' scorecards, earning another 5.5 points. Buckley's last fight takes us to the 5th of October 2024 for UFC 307 Piero vs Roundtree, where Buckley, still ranked 11th, would take on number 9 ranked Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. After a close first two rounds, which could have been scored either way, Buckley would turn up the pressure in the third, catching and finishing Wonderboy with a right hook and earning 12 points. With Buckley now out of the way, let's move on to Colby Covington, who I was quite surprised actually took this short notice call up. Colby has been extremely inactive in this half of his UFC career, especially compared to Buckley. For context, when we go back 5 fights for Colby, Buckley wasn't even in the UFC yet and has since amassed 14 fights for the organization. In any case, Colby will lose 5 points for taking this fight on short notice, as well as an extra 6 points as he is now 36 years old. 5 fights for Covington takes us all the way back to the 14th of December 2019 for UFC 245 Usman vs Covington, where Colby ranked 2 would be put up against the welterweight champion Kamaru Usman. In a very close back and forth, with both fighters high level wrestling more or less cancelling each other out, after 4 rounds the official scorecards had the fight even going into the last round. Both fighters would somehow turn up in an already incredibly high paced fight in the 5th with Usman ultimately finishing Covington with strikes 4 minutes and 10 seconds into the 5th, losing 7 points for Colby. 4 fights ago takes us to the 19th of September 2020 for UFC Fight Night Covington vs Woodley, where Colby, still ranked second, would be put up against former champion and fifth ranked Tyron Woodley. Taking place during Woodley's not throwing anything error, Colby would dominate the former champion through four rounds, ultimately finishing the fight via TKO after an awkward transition into half guard that would break Woodley's rib, earning 16 points. Three fights ago takes us to the 6th of November 2021 for UFC 268 Usman vs Covington 2, where Covington would make a second attempt at the welterweight champion Kamaru Usman. Covington would seemingly come into this fight with a strange game plan, looking timid in the first two rounds as he tries to strike from the outside. However, Colby would abandon this game plan in the third, reverting back to his typical high pressure volume and turning the fight into a competitive barn burner. Ultimately, it wouldn't be enough and Usman would be given the close unanimous decision victory, losing 2 points for Colby. Two fights ago takes us to the 5th of March 2022 for UFC 272 Covington vs Masvidal, where Covington, still ranked 1, would take on 6th ranked Jorge Masvidal. Outside of getting knocked down in the 4th, Colby would dominate every aspect of this fight bell to bell with an insane continuous volume and wrestling. Colby would put in one of his best performances against Jorge on his way to winning every round on two judges' scorecards, earning 15 points. Colby's last fight takes us to the 16th of December 2023 for UFC 296 Edwards vs Covington, 
where Colby, ranked 3, would make his third attempt at the undisputed championship against now champion Leon Edwards. In one of Colby's worst performances, he would seemingly be puzzled against Leon's takedown defense, especially from the clinch position. Colby would really provide no challenges to Leon aside from a takedown in the fifth round. Edwards would win this fight fairly comfortably via unanimous decision, losing two points for Colby. So there we have it, MMA math predicts Joaquin Buckley to beat Colby Covington. I also tend to agree with this prediction. Colby may honestly be one of the most overrated fighters in the history of the UFC, with his biggest career achievement being losing competitively to Kamaru Usman. Now 36 and coming off one of his worst performances, I struggle to see an avenue of victory for Colby against a streaking Joaquin Buckley. Thanks to everyone who made it to the end of this video, I just wanted to mention how much all of your support has meant to me. This channel is growing so much faster than I could have ever thought, and I just wanted to let you know that your engagement with the video, every like, every subscription and comment truly means the world. Thank you all for your continued support, and I'll see you in the next video.